Hi everyone, happy Monday. It's Sarah here with the Montana Science Center. I have another virtual preschool science experiment and book reading for us today. It's a little bit messier, so I thought I would do it on the countertop space of our science station. Today, we are going to be learning about blood. And blood can kind of make some people feel squeamish or scared, but it's actually really, really cool. And there's lots of science behind what makes up our blood. So to start off today's series, I'm going to read our book first, and then we'll go over our experiment. All right, here we go. Today's book is called A Drop of Blood, and it is by Paul Showers and illustrated by Edward Miller. A Drop of Blood. There is blood inside your body. When you cut yourself, you make a hole in your skin. Blood leaks out through the hole. If the cut is small, it soon stops bleeding. And these might look like some kind of scary characters, but they're just pretend. You don't have to cut yourself or bump yourself to find out where the blood is. You can see where it is. You can look at your blood with a flashlight. Go into the bathroom tonight and shut the door. Turn on the flashlight in the dark. Hold your fingers over the light. What color are they? His look kind of red. Look in the mirror in the dark. Hold the flashlight behind your ear. What color is your ear? Shine the flashlight in your mouth. What color are your cheeks? The blood in your fingers and your ear and your cheeks makes them look red. Blood is red because it is full of tiny red cells that float in a watery fluid called plasma. The red cells are very tiny. There are hundreds and thousands and millions of them in a single drop of blood. Red cells are too small to see with your eye. You have to look at them under a microscope. Then the red cells look like this, round and flat, thin in the middle, thick around the edge. Something like tiny donuts without holes. Here they are under a microscope. Red blood cells under a microscope. The blood is always moving inside your body. Your heart pumps it and keeps it moving. It moves through little tubes, your blood vessels. It moves out to the tips of your toes and fingers. It moves up to your head and down to your toes. So here he is sleeping, and you can see all of his veins and blood vessels. So they're being, the blood is being pumped or being moved throughout the body by the heart, and it goes all the way from the very tippy tippy top of his head to the very tippy tippy bottom of his toes. The red cells in your blood carry oxygen. Oxygen is part of the air you breathe. You cannot see oxygen, but you cannot live without it. Your body has to have oxygen every minute. You breathe oxygen into your lungs. The red cells in your blood take oxygen from your lungs. Red cells carry the oxygen to every part of your body. They carry oxygen to your muscles, to your bones, to your brain, your stomach and intestines, and your heart. So here is one part we have two lungs in our body, friends, and here's one lung. And see, these are the blood vessels where the red blood is bringing oxygen to our lungs. And here's more anatomy for us. So it labels our brain, our esophagus, our lungs. And blood has to be to every organ in our body so it can get oxygen through the red blood cells. Your body needs food as well as oxygen. When you eat, the food goes down to your stomach and to your intestines. There, food is changed into a fluid. The fluid moves from your intestines into your blood. You cannot see the food anymore, even under a microscope, but it is in your blood. Your blood takes the food and oxygen to every part of your body. It takes food to your bones to make them grow, to your muscles to make them strong, to your fingers and your toes, even your brain. So this is part of our bellies, our small intestine. Ooh, here's some white blood cells under a microscope. So, so far we've learned about red blood cells in our blood, and now we're going to learn about white blood cells in our blood. There are white cells in your blood too. They are bigger than red cells. Your blood has fewer white cells than red cells, but there are thousands of white cells in one drop of blood. 
white cells protect you against disease germs. A white cell wraps itself around a germ and eats it up. Then the germ cannot harm you. That's kind of cool. Some things in your blood are smaller than the white cells, even smaller than the red cells. They have no color. They are flat and round, like little plates. They are called platelets. When you cut your skin, blood runs out. Platelets gather around the cut. They form a plug that helps to stop the bleeding. Sometimes that's called a clot. So here are the platelets under a microscope. They're like the purple looking things. Next, the blood begins to clot. Oh, there's that word I just said. The threads called fibrin form in the plasma. The fibrin threads make a net across the cut. Red cells and white cells are caught in the net. Soon the net becomes thick with red and white cells. A clot has formed. The blood cannot flow through the clot and the bleeding stops. The clot hardens and becomes a scab. Later, new skin will grow under the scab and close the cut. So here are the steps. Platelets pour in through the blood vessels to plug up the clot. So see, there's the platelets. Fibrin net starts to form. So there's the net that the white and red blood cells can't escape through. And a scab forms. This might have happened to you if you've ever fall, fallen and scraped your knee. And eventually it stops bleeding and there's a scab. Little people do not need much blood. Kathy is one year old and she weighs 24 pounds. She has about one and a half pints of blood in her body. That is less than one quart. Big people need more blood. Russell is 11 years old. He weighs 88 pounds. He has about five and a half pints of blood in his body. That is a little less than three quarts. An adult who is six feet tall and weighs 180 pounds has about 11 pints of blood. 11 pints are the same as five and a half quarts. So as you grow and grow taller and begin to weigh more, you have more blood in your body. Red cells do not last forever. They wear out. White cells and platelets wear out too. But your body makes new red and white cells and new platelets every day. When you cut yourself, you lose some blood. You lose red cells and white cells, you lose platelets, but that doesn't matter. Your body has plenty of new ones to take their place. It keeps making new ones all the time. So here are some facts about blood. You have 100,000 kilometers of blood vessels in your body. That's long enough to circle the earth two and a half times. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. Arteries carry blood that is full of oxygen and nutrients away from your heart so that your heart can use them. Capillaries connect the smallest arteries to the smallest veins. Veins carry blood back to the heart so that the blood can be refueled. Your heart is a muscle, just like the muscles in your arms and legs. Your heart pumps more than 2,000 gallons of blood through the body each day. The heart contracts 100,000 times each day. Every year, 40,000 children are born with heart defects. Luckily, most defects can be treated with surgery or medicine. Over 2,000 heart transplants are performed each year. When a person's heart stops working, doctors can remove the unhealthy heart and replace it with a healthy heart. How to make sure your heart stays healthy. Don't smoke. Eat a healthy diet. Candy, sugary soda, and salty foods can lead to heart disease when you are older. Fruits, vegetables, lean meats, and fish have the nutrients that can help you grow up to be a, health, a healthy adult. Be active. Running, jumping, and walking outside or in the school gym will help your heart and body grow strong. Have checkups regularly. Your doctor can help you learn about how your heart works and what you can do to keep it, help it stay healthy. And then there's more titles to read about blood if you would like. All right, friends, that is the end of our book reading. Well, I hope you learned something new about blood and what makes up our blood, and maybe it seems a little less scary right now. I think the more we know about something, the less scary it seems. So now I remember that we learned that blood has red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and it also has plasma. So for our science experiment, we're going to make a simulation or a fake version of what our blood would look like under a microscope. And I'm gonna use some really silly things that aren't real red or white blood cells because they're so little, the real red and white blood cells, I can't see them with just my eyes. So I'm going to use some silly things that I picked up from the grocery store to make a simulated or fake version of what our blood looks like under a microscope. 
So let's get started. I'll show you the materials that we're gonna use and how to do it. All right, friends, here are the materials that I'm gonna use today. So I'm gonna use a small jar, and this is what we're gonna put all of our ingredients in. Then I have red cinnamon candies that are going to be our red blood cells. I have some corn syrup that's going to be the plasma. Lentils are going to be the platelets. Remember how little the platelets are? Lentils are pretty small. And these lima beans are gonna be our white blood cells. So to begin, I'm going to measure some of this into a jar and then we'll go ahead and take a look to see what it looks like. I'm gonna start first by pouring the corn syrup into our jar. And remember, the corn syrup represents the plasma of our blood. All right, I have it in our jar and it is very sticky just as a, just as a precaution. Make sure you're not getting everywhere because it is sticky. Next, I have some red blood cells here and I'm gonna take a second and pause to count these with you. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten red blood cells. I'm gonna go ahead and plop those in our plasma. All right. Next, I'm going to pour the lentils into our jar. And remember, the lentils represent the platelets of our blood. And finally, I'm going to pour some of these lima beans into the jar as well. The lima beans represent our white blood cells. And last but not least, I am going to stir this with a spoon before we look at the results. All right, here is a side profile of what it looks like. I can see the white blood cells, these larger beans, the platelets, the smaller beans, the red candies, our red blood cells and everything that's floating in is our plasma so if we look at it from above I can see the same as well looks like all of our red blood cells are at the bottom of the jar because they are a bit heavier so friends if we were to look under a microscope and look at a drop of blood we would see a version of what we're seeing now. What we're seeing now is food and it's not actually blood, but it's a simulated or a fake version of what we would see if we looked at a drop of blood under the microscope. So if you would like to draw what you found, that is a great extension of this science activity. Um, you can continue to stir as well and get different viewings of this simulated activity. All right, there you have it. That is a wrap on another virtual preschool science series. We are excited to welcome you back into the space when it is safe to do so. Until then, keep watching our videos, share them, tag a friend, try it at home. Let us know your feedback as well. All right, catch you next time. Bye.